Hey friend, Brandon here. I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Galaxy S22 Plus for over a week now, and I have some thoughts and feelings about Samsung's smartphone lineup that I'm honestly conflicted about. There are some good things in it, but there are some things I'm left longing for, and a lot that I'm honestly just bummed out about. Plus, we should talk about whether or not you should upgrade to the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra from last year's Galaxy S21 Ultra or from the Note 20 Ultra. I think the answer isn't as clear or as obvious as you'd think, but if you do decide to buy a new phone, check out the links in the description as they often have a deal attached them and it helps support the channel. Now to better understand the issue, we have to briefly talk about what the Note really is. The Samsung Galaxy Note started as something kind of polarizing, if not insane, when it first came out. It had top of the line specs that weren't found in any of Samsung's other phones, an unheard of 5.3 inch screen that many said made no sense and no one would ever want to use a phone with a screen that huge. Hilarious. <laughs> And of course, the iconic S Pen, which harkened back to the days of Palm Pilots in trios. The term phablet was born because many saw it as a mix between a phone and a tablet. And honestly, it wasn't really an enduring term at the time. While the Galaxy Note got a lot of criticisms because of how over the top it was compared to other phones out at the time, that was clearly what Samsung intended. If you wanted the best from Samsung with every feature, option, and capability that they could come up with, you could only get it on the Galaxy Note. Even those curved edge displays that people love or hate started with the Galaxy Note Edge. And the Galaxy Note didn't crash and burn, or well, not completely. In fact, despite some setbacks along the way, the Samsung Galaxy Note was a huge success that managed to sell over 10 million units for multiple models in a row within the first couple of months of release. But eventually, those over-the-top features of the Note would trickle down to other Samsung Galaxy models, like the curved screen, larger displays, top-tier specs, and more. But uh, not the S Pen, which is, you know, very much the Note. And that's where the problem comes in. Over the years, the things that differentiated the Samsung Galaxy Note from the normal S series pretty much disappeared outside the S Pen and that boxy design that the Note series has been known for. Add in the fact that the Note would be released with essentially the same specs as the S series but months later and with a new generation of processor chips coming only a short few months later, many felt like the Samsung Galaxy Note wasn't the top of the line option anymore but something that was soon to have specs that were outdated. The only way to justify it was the S Pen. And this kind of awkward feeling was looming for a few years in a row and the justification for its existence being the S Pen and the S Pen alone, I didn't think it was enough reason for the Note to exist anymore, at least in its current iteration and release window. In fact, three years ago when the Note 9 was announced, I made a video on the Android Police YouTube channel asking why the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 exists when we have the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. I presented the idea that Samsung needed to put an end to the Note by merging the lines. And while that was a bit early on my part, it seemed obvious that something needed to change. So Samsung tried to save the Note by splitting it up into two devices, one being the Note Ultra, which had the highest specs available to it and at an even higher price than normal, and then the normal Note, which was uncharacteristically lower spec despite retaining its older price point, and of course, the S Pen. It just didn't really seem to work, so Samsung took a gap year off and then finally killed the Note in 2022, this year, in name, and finally moved its release date to align itself with the rest of the Galaxy S series, just like I had predicted. So that leads us to now with the Samsung Galaxy S22 lineup. We have the Samsung Galaxy S22 and 22 Plus that looks like the Samsung Galaxy S devices that came from from the year prior, and then we gained the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra which takes a top tier spot but looks nothing like the other S22 devices. In fact, it looks like it was the model that was supposed to come after the Galaxy S20 Ultra but held back a year until now and, well, without the camera bar. And while there are some significant problems with this, which we'll talk about in a moment, this means that the Note is back in the spot it was always intended to have with the highest cutting edge specs but with the name Ultra instead of Note. Now speaking of cutting edge, what if there was something cutting edge that could actually make you money instead of just taking your money. Well, lucky for us, I was reading Forbes and I came across just that. No, it's not an NFT. It's a way to completely upgrade how you invest so you can stay ahead of a disaster. So what is this disaster, you ask? Well, most experts are predicting disastrous portfolio returns of below 5% for the next 10 plus years, which is crazy. As a result, these same experts are saying it's now essential to invest in alternative assets like gold, real estate, and art. That's right. Art is an asset you want in your portfolio. It's outperformed the S&P 500 for the last 25 years and has low correlation to other assets. And now, thanks to Masterworks, the sponsor of this portion of the video, you can add pieces by Picasso, Banksy, and Basquat to your portfolio and at a price point that works for you. I'm not the only one who thinks this is awesome. Some of you, my subscribers, did too, because after my last video where I talked about Masterworks, not only did some of you sign up, but you also invested. As a result, this is Tech Today subscribers once again get special priority access to skip their waitlist by clicking the link in the description or going to masterworks.art slash this is Tech 
check today. Oh, and uh, they released a new cause painting that's uh, selling out pretty fast. So, you know, go check it out. Now, to be fair, it's a lot easier saying what a company should do than actually doing the thing that a company ends up doing. Now that Samsung has merged the Note into the normal S series, I can't help but feel like we as consumers actually have worse options from a Samsung smartphone than before. Let me explain. Let's look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra from last year. It is a top of the line Samsung Galaxy S series device and it had a great design. It even has a flat screen that barely curves over at the edges. I honestly felt like this was the best release from Samsung so far because it felt refined and matured. They actually pulled back a little bit. You see, when the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra came out, the one that came before this one, it went all out with the most insane camera specs possible. And in that process, it gained a ton of issues along with it, like not being able to focus well. Sadly, it wasn't something they could fix in software. It must have been like some sort of hardware issue if I were to guess, but I kind of got the feeling that their ambition got away from them. With the S21 Ultra, they scaled back some of their ambition and focused on refinement and execution, and they pulled it off. The S21 Ultra is a great phone and even had the ability to work with the S Pen. If you just happen to want to buy the S Pen, the only model that worked for this specific phone. <laughs> there are just so many S Pen models now. Where this becomes a problem is where you go from having this incredible design language, top tier specs, and refinement, and you think about upgrading to the S22 lineup, and you're left with, well, not that. You, you get this. It's just not the same phone. You see, if you want the top of the line specs that the S21 offered, but updated, you only have one option, the Samsung Galaxy Note 22 Ultra. I mean, the S22 Ultra. <laughs> it's a completely different design language. It has an S Pen that you have to get even if you don't want it, and the super curved screens that scratch on me the first hours in my pocket. What if you don't want this? And you might say, Brendan, what about the S22 Plus? Isn't that a good replacement? And the answer is sadly, well, no. And while I do think it has a phenomenal design language and feel in the hand that I think is actually better than the S21 Ultra, like seriously, this is a dang good looking phone and it feels great in the hand. I, I think it actually manages to avoid that uncomfortable jabby feeling that you get on the iPhone 13 Pro because the sides are actually slightly curved. But anyways, that, that's not enough. The S22 Plus is not a replacement for the S21 Ultra. Why? Well, it doesn't have a WQHD Plus screen like the S21 Ultra has. It has an FHD Plus screen, which according to the comments in my Galaxy S22 Tips and Tricks video, a lot of people didn't realize that their $1,000 phone did not have a higher resolution screen. It also doesn't have all the cameras and sensors. It has less RAM and a smaller battery. What are the things that people talk about the most and experience so much in a phone? The screen, the camera, and the battery life. Well, at least you get the most recent processor out there. So if you want a non-note style phone with a flat screen, you're only left with a lower tier device. You can't even use the S Pen on it like the S21 Ultra. You aren't given a choice, and that's a great loss. Also, I know a lot of you always ask me like, what kind of skins I have on my phone or what cases I use. Well, it's from channel sponsor Dbrand and they have like their leather skins back again and it's like awesome. I use it on my Google Pixel and it's already patinaed and got really dark and nice and beautiful. And they have this new really thin case that's available for the S22 Ultra that has this nice flush design for the cameras. It's great. So go check it out. There are links down below in the description. So what's the solution? <laughs> I th the only thing I can think of is having the same problem you had before with a top tier note device and a top tier S device, but release them at the same time or rip the bandaid off and cut the note design language and put the S Pen inside of the S series device. But you know what that means? Those that love the note design language loses out. Whatever we have right now feels half baked and I don't really know what the solution is, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So I guess some of you might be asking, uh, Brandon, should I upgrade? <laughs> so if you've been a Note user in the past and you prefer using the Note, this is honestly a great follow-up to the previous Note 20 Ultra. You get the most up-to-date processor, modern Wi-Fi and modem technology, a charging speed that goes up to 45 watts, if it does go as advertised, a better and brighter screen, which is amazing, with a dynamic refresh rate, and then more cameras. The only thing you really miss out on is a slightly smaller screen, which I don't think you could really tell, no micro SD card slot, a starting RAM size of 8 gigabytes instead of 12 gigabytes, and no FM radio. So, I mean, I, I don't really think you have a dramatic loss. If you have the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, I would honestly keep it unless you want to go for a Note-like device. Otherwise, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is still the best Samsung Galaxy phone that I can think of in a long time, and you can use it with an S Pen if you want to. The biggest upgrades that you're missing out on are really just the latest processor, a brighter screen, and some of the more crazy camera features and abilities, which, if we're gonna be honest, they're helpful occasionally, but not, like, often. It's not, like, a deal breaker, in my opinion. But what do you think about all this and do you think you'll upgrade your phone? Let me know in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We'd love to have you. Until next time.